Bit of a turn before we leave you tonight. She is one of the most recognizable faces and voices covering federal politics. CBC reporter Julie Van Dusen announced yesterday that today is her last day scrumming and grilling politicians for now. Anyway, CBC audiences have been informed by her coverage of Parliament and the nation's political leaders for 30 years. She's known for her frank questions and literally chasing politicians down all over Parliament Hill. People listen to what a politician is saying, and often they're saying, what? Like, what do you mean by that? And, and they just want someone to ask that. The Prime Minister, the Reform Party says you're using this money to buy votes. What do you make of that? I mean, they're, they're releasing graphs, and they're showing how everything is spiked up. I mean, that doesn't look very good for your party, does it, to have that kind of thing out there? I can, Julie, no comment. No, you can't. no comment. Okay, are you leaving? Is this true? Uh, no comment whatsoever. Why are you, don't let go of my hand. I got you. <laughs> you got me by the hand here. Okay, I'm in why prison. are you leaving? What's the deal? No, uh, no comment whatsoever. What's the priority? Get back here. You don't want to be a running away shot. Come here. Come here. Okay. Did you get hit with a rock on your head after you got off that plate? <laughs> No, it just seems you don't remember anything. I mean, if... Oh, sorry, Tim. Yeah, I have a question. Um, Go ahead, Tim. If you want a question, you can. Yeah. Well, we've lined up here, Prime Minister, for the I last... Tim to ask a question. Go ahead, Tim, if you want. So you're going to ignore everyone in the lineup that's been lining up for 15 minutes? Tim, do you want to ask a question or not? Go ahead, well, I, Tim. I wasn't aware of... Uh, Julie, I just wanted to wish you uh, all the very best in your next chapters. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. Thank you. And Julie herself joins us now. Hi, Julie. Hi, Thanks for being with us. I'm very sad that this is happening on your last day, but I'm grateful to have you here. When you watch that, what do you think to yourself? I think I'm crazy. <laughs> and I wouldn't answer any of my questions either. Like, seriously, yes. I would run away. No. Oh, no. my God. I wouldn't want to be interviewed by me. No, what an invaluable service you have provided us. I loved listening to that. I loved being, when I used to work in my old job, I used to go to these scrums and be in them and listen to you, and I loved it in person as well. Tell us a bit about what you're not, I, I've been told I cannot say the word retire. That's not what you're doing. What are you doing? Well, because that's not even in, in my lexicon. I'm leaving the place I love, the CBC. Um, the big motivating factor, I guess, is two things. In the pandemic, um, it's kind of taken some of the fun out of politics. It's an amazing story. But Parliament Hill is a ghost town. Mm -hmm. And um, anyone who's worked on Parliament Hill for a while knows that you're part of a village. There's people, there's gossip, there's hurly-burly, there's things happening. You know, oh my God, go over here, go over there, run up here, run up there. It's dead. Um, so in some ways, but, but the, the motivating factor, I've got, well, I'm not just me, there's seven of us. We have an amazing mother. And uh, she's smart, she's funny, she's a full-time artist. Uh, she's 94, she's on her own, thank God, uh, in her own apartment. Um, and I've been taking jabs at writing a book with her, putting her life story down. So it's been hard with a job like this. So I'm, I've decided I could do a million scrums down the road, and maybe I'll do more, but I've only got one mom. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, I'm gonna scrum my mom. <laughs> and, and she's not she, looking I'm forward say, to it. She, does she know what it's going to be she's like to be scrummed by Julie Van She's Dinsen? got an idea, yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's going to be fun, and she knows that. Is she excited? Uh, yeah, no, no, we have a ball together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, even in a pandemic, it'll be fun. So walk down memory lane with us for a little while, if you would. Uh, indulge us. What are some of the things that really stick out from you uh, over your decades of working on the Hill? Oh my God, that's crazy. I, I don't even know if I could go there. I remember when, when the center block was closing, um, sitting in the foyer uh, at about 10 o'clock at night. There was no one there and it was about to close the next day. And I just remember like all the sounds and um, uh, you know, the, the lighting was such that I just sat there. I could, um, I had five siblings working up there at one point with myself and my dad. I could see my dad. I could see my siblings. I could see politicians coming down the staircase. I could see Jean Chrétien running up like two stairs at a time. I was at the tail end of Brian Mulroney, so I could see him standing at the bottom as he did, kind of like a, a perch. I could see the top of Stephen Harper's head uh, just going because he didn't like to come in the front door. Like I would be in the foyer every morning around 8.30. I mean, it was, for me, it was like my bedroom. I would just take my stuff off, <laughs> fling stuff around, throw my purse over here, notepad there, muffin here. And um, all the politicians would normally come up the stairs, all the prime ministers. Over the years, I've seen a few, but Stephen Harper didn't. So he'd come in a back door. So like for him, it would be, I'd see the top of his head go by. 
So, um, and so many scrums and, you know, there was a shooting. There was, I mean, I've been up there since I was a kid, like literally running around that place since I was Your two family years. has a huge history there. My dad worked on the Hill for years for John Diefenbaker. He started, he was up there as a reporter. He was in the Commons when uh, Churchill said some chicken, some neck. I mean, our family, like to me, it's a second home. And what was the, you mentioned the shooting, and I know that for you that was kind of an important, you know, a, a tough but important moment in your years of covering it. What was that like? Um, well, I mean, just briefly, to me, because it's my workplace, and, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I won't get into all the details because it takes, like, hours. <laughs> I'll put it in my mom's book. Uh, no, no, but, I mean, uh, that morning um, I had my purse with all my junk all over the place. I was looking for change because the guys were going to go upstairs and get a coffee. We'd just finished scrums because uh, people were going into caucus. And then all hell broke loose, right? You could hear the, the, the bangs down the hallway. No one knew where to run. I ran into the House of Commons. I ran into the washroom. I stood on the toilet. Because I, I the guy said, and then the security guards were running down saying, run, run, this is real, right? But anyway, I mean, it was a long day. I was lying on the floor. I didn't know what was happening. There was lots of banging all over the place because they were running, guards were running up around, looking in doors, seeing who was there, whatever. But I guess it was just, no, I mean, it was great because we all processed it, proce processed it over the days, but it is your workplace. And it was like, wow, some guy can do this in your workplace. Did but anyway, it was the way you looked at working on the Hill at all, or did things no. go back to normal for you? Yeah, I went back to normal. Went back to normal. No, I mean, I was, I was definitely shaken up. It was uh, scary, but I guess it made me look at things a little differently. Yes, you know what? That's a good point. Because, oh, that's a really good point. Because <laughs> I'd go to a news conference, and if there were really important people, I'd be looking for the exits from that point on. Mm -hmm. If I heard a sound, I'd, like, because there was a lot of uh, ricocheting and um, from the sound of the, of the bullets and things, um, you know, falling over and stuff like that. So if I hear a, a loud sound, even sometimes now, but, but no, I mean, I just, uh, I'm, you know, I moved on, but, um, but I'm always looking, where's the exit? Where's the exit? Are these people, is, are these super important or no, but I mean, would someone want to come in here? So where's the exit? Yeah. So sometimes I think that way. You, you, you flagged that incident, but a whole lot of others. And I hope I'm not telling tales out of school, this lovely note that you wrote yesterday to announce to the bureau that you were leaving because I mean, I didn't know, maybe other people did. I had no idea. No, no, no. So it was like a, a complete, you know, there was no six month goodbye or anything. It was a total shock. I'm not into that. No, I know you're not. But what, what stood out to me were two things. First of all, that you were so grateful for your time here, that you felt lucky to, mm -hmm. to work here because mm -hmm. I feel that way too. But second of all, that you were never bored. Oh. And I think that's the coolest thing. And, and Never, not for one second. Never. Never. I've never been bored because... Even if you're on the hill, well, first of all, if I'd go, if I would, to me, if you're selling fish, you go where the fish are, right? Mm -hmm. So I would go to the hill in the morning, and if there were five meetings going on, but you had to wait outside, I'd just wait outside, make my phone calls, run and get a muffin, go bug somebody, follow Jim Flaherty to the washroom, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you have to show up to find them, and you're not going to see too many MPs at your desk. No. That was always my motto. Like you live that. I know that because when I used to go to the hill every day, you were there every single day. I mean, every me, camera guy knows you. Every, you know, like well, you there are was a no, fixture. There was well, is that a bad thing? It's a wonderful no, thing. But if you're it's an to me, thing. like if you're selling fish, you go where the fish are. Yeah. So that's where the fish are. So that's where I wanted to be. So because of that, you would, you know, they'd sit on the bench, well, especially up on the center block. It's a little more convoluted now. But and the next thing you know, they're telling you all about their weekend and what happened, and oh my God, they're getting a divorce, and this happened, and they don't think they're going to run again, but keep it to yourself or whatever, right? And that leads me to the other thing that I loved about your note, which was um, your description of politicians. And I think mm -hmm. you look at those clips and you have the best way in scrums of getting to the heart of an issue and asking, like you said, what does this mean? Like, wh why should we care? What does this mean? What exactly do you mean by that? You did that today in a, in a press conference with the prime minister. Uh, but you also have a lot of time and respect for the people who put themselves por forward in those positions. And I know I spent a lot of this show asking them tough questions and grilling them. But at the end of the day, they're, pol they're people, too. And you made that point, I thought, really eloquently. Well, because I've gotten to know so many of them over the years, um, I'm, I'm not getting to know them like they're my best friend type of thing. But I don't look at them as suits going in and out of the commons. I look at them for what they are. They're people that are putting their lives on the line. I remember this MP telling me, you know, um, I go home on the weekends and I can't even tell my kid to do the dishes. Like, I have no status because I've been away all week. Like, they put their families on the line, their lives on the line. They're in a, 
you know, they're, they're in the spotlight. If they do anything, people scrutinize them. Um, no, I have tremendous uh, respect for them. And it's a revolving door. Um, so, you know, here you can, and you take it personally, no matter what happens when you lose, when you win, you think you won on your own coattails, <laughs> right? You don't yeah. think it's because the party is in a wave. You think it's because of all the work you did. And so when you lose, you take it the same way. Oh my God, how can I show my face around here? It's a brutal business. I would, I would never be a politician <laughs> in a million years. Especially with Julie Van Dusen asking <laughs> you questions, right? But I love talking to them because they live on the edge. I mean, they are big risk takers. They can have a job for four years. They put everything on the line. They may have put their money on the line, their reputation. People start poking into their backgrounds, um, you know, and it's democracy. If they didn't do it, who would? It is democracy. What are you going to miss the most? Have you thought about that? Um, you know what? Um, I'm going to miss the hill. I've, my first job up here was receptionist for Pierre Trudeau. Oh, my goodness. So I've been here a while. So Well, we hope to see you back. I hope this um, I could be prime minister next year. The title of Maybe. my mom's book is You, you Can't Write the Script. <laughs> I was supposed to be a French <laughs> teacher and look at me. Anything's possible. <laughs> Anything's possible. I look forward to our first interview uh, with the next prime minister. <laughs> okay, there you go. Thanks, Julie, so okay, much for spending some time with us, and congratulations. That is the CBC's Julie Van Dusen, and I know I speak on behalf of our entire team here at Power and Politics when we wish you the best of luck and uh, huge congratulations on your non-retirement, and we can't read, wait to read that book with your mom.